to a GMU student.com and today we are going to continue rolling through in our Ajax series. So in the previous tutorial we figured out how to create our Ajax object and then we figured out what these two statements mean. So if the Ajax object is not null, meaning that it was configured up here, that means that we want to open a request with our server. We want it to be a get request, we want to ask for a specific URL, and we want to do it asynchronously. Then, after we say everything that we want to do, we send out that request right here. So I hope this makes sense to everyone. Now we are going to, under all of this, we're going to type a little bit of code and then I'm going to explain it afterwards. So what I want you guys to say is Ajax object dot on ready state change and then say is assigned function and then under here give me some braces and then a semicolon at the very end now inside I want you to say if Ajax object dot ready state equals equals four and Ajax object dot status equals equals two hundred then what we want to do is document dot get element by ID. We want to utilize that ID and then inner HTML is assigned Ajax object dot response text. Now I know this is a whole lot. Trust me, I'm going to do like I do in all my tutorials. I will explain exactly what the hell we just wrote. So when a request is to a server is sent, we want to perform some actions based on that response. And the on ready state change event is triggered every time the ready state changes. So this on ready state change is going to be triggered multiple times every single time the ready state changes. Now, the ready state of the Ajax object will change every single time um, something differently is happening with our request. So the request might say like, okay, the server connection is established and then the request is received and all these different things. So the way it talks about all of its ready states is it starts at zero and it goes up to four. So a ready state of four would mean that the request is still not ready yet. And as it gets to one, two, three, and four, it's getting closer and closer. But once our ready state gets to four, that will mean that our request is ready. And the status will mean if it was found. So this is getting our request ready. This is saying, okay, is our request ready to be sent? Is our request ready to be sent? Is it all sent? Is everything good? And then once the request is good, it's going to grab that URL that we wanted to get. So the ready state would be four. That means that the request is good and it's ready to go. And then if the status is 200, that will mean that whatever URL that the request grabbed, it found. So this would actually be 404 if it was not found. But if it's 200, that means it's found. So again, this Ajax object on ready state change, this thing here is going to be called every single time the ready state changes. So it starts at zero, then it goes zero, one, two, three, four. And you are saying every single time the ready state changes, I want you to look at this function. So when the ready state goes from zero to one, you will look at this function, but the Ajax object ready state will, will be, won't be four. So he won't do this if statement. Then he'll come back and then the on ready state change will change again and now it will go to two. So he will check what's in here, but our if statement says it has to be four to do this, so it won't do that. And we'll keep doing that until it's four and it's 200. So as long as these two things are satisfied, it becomes four and it becomes 200, that will mean that our Ajax object would have the ready state and it had a good configuration with the server and it found the information that we wanted. So if both of those things are true, then what we want to do is we want to take whatever that Ajax object found. So what did it find? It should find this text. So we want to take whatever that Ajax object found. So you, you say that by saying Ajax object dot response text and you want to put it into the div that we specified. So remember that ID that we specified, which was load here? So if this all works out, it will scan the document. 
it will look for an ID of whatever ID we sent in from the parameter, and then inside that ID, it would put whatever was grabbed from that Ajax test.html. Where that's all, folks. This is it. So we figure out that everything is good and everything is working out fine. And then once it becomes four and it becomes 200, meaning that we have a good request and the page was found, then take everything in the response and put it into the HTML. So now let's go back over and let's see if this worked. So we're in Chrome, we refresh the browser, and we look in here and we look at the view page source and we'll see that load here does not have any text in it. But what we want to do is we want to put this text into load here and have it plop in there asynchronously when we click this button. So I'll refresh the page again, I'll click the button and boom, into that div became all of our text. I hope this works for everyone, but I know some of the people who are watching this tutorial this might not have worked for. So, a little bit of error checking that I usually do whenever I, I write all my Ajax and it doesn't work, is I'll start to put alerts in my function. So I'll put an alert here and make sure that, okay, so far we're so good. And then maybe I'll put an alert in here. So then I'll know, okay, the Ajax object was configured and it's not null. So if I have an alert in here, that means that part was good. And then I'll usually come down here and I'll put an alert. And if there was an alert triggered here, then we really don't know what happens because then everything should have worked fine. So if you can put alerts through your program, it'll usually let you figure out where there was a hitch in the program. And it's probably just just a little typo here or there. So that's just a little bit of advice for anybody who might have a problem so far. So I hope you guys are excited because we just utilized some Ajax. If you refresh the page, you will see that there is absolutely no source code in there. But if they click this button, boom, all of a sudden information is plopped into the div that we specified. All right. So I hope you guys liked this tutorial and I hope it was useful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back with more tutorials.